Hello again and welcome back to another tutorial on using the new version of Video Studio X3. Recent episodes have covered the new additions to Video Studio X3's launcher, namely Burn and Easy Edit. These entry and mid-level video editing apps within the full package of Video Studio provide alternatives for newer users and those with specific needs for their video projects. In this tutorial, I will cover photo editing options within Burn and Easy Edit, as they are identical in these particular areas. Burn and Easy Edit also have very similar interfaces. They accept the same media, such as video, photos, and audio clips, have identical media organizers, and also share some output options. But while they share the same photo editing tools, they differ in video editing tools. So I've created a separate video editing tutorial for both Burn and Easy Edit that you can peruse. Why the differences? Well, Burn is the most entry-level application of Video Studio, right? Its point is to concentrate on getting your media quickly to DVD without regard or the need to do more than the most basic of media editing. Want to do more? Jump into Easy Edit or Advanced Edit. Also remember that neither Burn nor Easy Edit have audio editing features and all only have basic photo editing options. This is a video app after all. Okay, let me show you what photo editing options are available in here. I've selected Easy Edit from the launcher and I'm now in the Media Organizer. The first thing we can do is actually right here in the organizer. I'm going to open up a folder of some images that need editing. In the upper right, I'm going to click on the Tags button to add search criteria to some of my photos. Watch this. I'm going to type in a new tag with my daughter's name. Click Add. Now I'm going to control select the images I want to add this tag to. And then click the Jacqueline tag. Now I'll go to the search bar up here, type in Jacqueline, and you can see it's already brought up those particular photographs. Pretty nice, huh? Now let's look at photo editing options. I'm going to go to my albums area and open my folder of images that need editing again. I just need to double click any one of these to go into the express edit area as it will bring in the entire album. So here is my photograph I just clicked on, and here are all the other ones down below. I like the way that it stays mostly out of the way until I mouse over. My additional tools over here on the right behave the same way. All right, my most commonly used photo fix tools are across the top here. Rotate, Crop, Red Eye, and Quick Fix. All these tools are seriously very easy to use. Now this image needs a red eye fix, so let's start there. Click the red eye tool, and notice, no dialog box pops up to get in the way of my photograph. I like that too. All we have down here is a slider that adjusts the size of the selection. You really don't have to get too precise, just as long as when you click, it doesn't hit any other red areas. There, I've zoomed in a little bit, adjust the size, all I need to do is click on each eye once, and it fixes the red eye. All right, let's try cropping this photo while we're here, too. Click the Crop tool. Notice these dots actually move the horizontal and vertical dimensions at the same time, mainly because I have a constraint down here to 4 by 6 or I can choose many of the other options we have here for preset sizes that you can go out to print with. If I didn't want to constrain it, click the Constrain button to turn it off. It goes to Freeform, and now I can make any adjustments I want to. I can also go from Portrait to Landscape Views by clicking this. And when I'm ready, I simply click Apply. Very nice, very simple to do. OK, Apply, let's move on. Oh, you know what? I forgot to save the work. Let me go back. Check this out. It actually saved it automatically. Isn't that a great feature? But what if you didn't want to save those changes? Well, all you need to do is simply click the wonderful Revert to Original button. And it takes it all the way back. You can revert an image anytime today, tomorrow, or even next year. All right, let's try a quick fix. That was very nice. How about the straighten tool? OK, this is one of my favorites, basically because I get to straighten the Leaning Tower of Pisa. Let me click the straighten tool and use a slider down here to rotate the image until it's exactly where I want it. But notice what's happening here. See the shadow around the outside? 
That's the canvas that this tool will also trim for you in order to make your picture fit in its new frame, so to speak. As far as I know, there is only one product outside the Corel line that does both of these operations at once. And nope, it's not from Adobe. Otherwise, you must manually use the crop tool afterwards to trim off the excess canvas. Unfortunately, that only works as good as your vision or mouse dexterity allows. This process gets it right the first time, every time. No lost pixels, no edges left over. Now, lastly, let's look at the More Tools area. Not much here, but because, again, we're in the image editing area, not the video editing area. You've seen how we use tags. We can apply those here as well. And the Details area just gives you a little more information about your image. That's it for this tutorial. Thank you for your time, and we'll see you in the next one.